Titans, go! podcast aka the doom patrol podcast i'm your host charles skaggs and with me in doom manor once again my co-host everybody's favorite co-host jesse jackson hello charles how are you doing i'm doing okay doing okay have a pretty good weekend not bad not bad well good how about, how about, how about, how about you everything's going pretty well pretty quiet weekend linda was off at a uh retreat so yeah. I got to be a bachelor, and so oh, yes. um, did you catch up on your TV viewing? Yes, I did. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. I figured you that DV, that DVR must have got a workout. Yes, it did. It's uh, very nice, and uh, though I'm really, um, as I've shared off screen, um, I have an older TV, so it is not a smart TV. Yeah, and it only has two HDMI plugs, okay. so I can't Google Cast on it. Yeah. And so to watch the DC universe, I have to be at my computer. Okay. Um, but there is so many of the DCU uh, animated movies because I had gotten I don't I no longer do Netflix, you know, discs. Right. And I don't buy them. And so I was like, you know, if I could go if I could sit in my recliner and just go <laughs> through these, this would make a great um, you know weekend of binging. To catch right. up on a lot of these a animated. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so kind of give you a head, little tech yeah. heads up. They do have uh, HDMI splitters. Yes. Okay. So I have so, to pick up one of those. So so you could basically plug it in, and then it'll have more than one port. Okay. Good. I'll have to take you. So yeah, go kind of check in your kind of audio visual tech geek area right. in, in the store, and uh, maybe you can find one. But Very that's good. just a little. That's a little. Uh, uh, AV advice from yours truly. Titan talk, tech talk. Tech talk, <laughs> exactly. Yes. All right, so uh, so yes, we're going to talk some more Doom Patrol, everybody, because, hey, Doom Patrol has been awesome. And if you haven't been watching, shame on you because it's been so good. And today here at episode 27, we're going to talk Therapy Patrol, or as Cliff Steele refers to it, Therapy, Therapy, Therapy Patrol. So – so I, I have not gone online to check out anyone's thoughts on this one, uh, but if they were if they were unhappy with last week's episode, I can yeah. only imagine what they feel this week's episode. Well, this was big on character development. So this was huge on character development. So, this so forget, was, what, forget what yeah. they think. You know, I, I know I enjoyed it. I loved it. Um, I we got so much backstory with these guys and so much oh, insight into our characters this week. Yeah, um, this is just wonderful. Uh, I, this was such a great uh, episode in, in every way. Right. Um, and, and we got so much of where everyone's at. And, and I loved – I loved seeing Cliff taking kind of – Certainly not a leadership role, but a very active, like, you know, we got to get our stuff yes. working. And, and, and also, the, like, he kind of he realizes that everybody needs to be, yeah. like, to get all these problems out. And, uh, and even Rita kind of goes along with it later in the episode, and we'll talk about that. Yeah. And, this, and the, uh, surprise villain at the end was. <laughs> Nobody, genius. if you saw that coming, you're totally lying. Nobody exactly. saw that coming. No one saw that coming. No one saw that coming. But, uh, it obviously connects to Mr. Nobody. Yeah. And, and I, 
But okay, I'll wait till you talk about Cliff. I'm sure Cliff is one of our top. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I okay. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do a little different structure this week because okay. of of how this episode was structured. Um, before we get into that though, let's get into uh, kind of an overview of the episode. So this is episode seven of Doom Patrol season one, that aired just a couple of days ago on March 29th, 2019, written by Neil Reynolds, who co-wrote the second episode of the season, Donkey Patrol. And it was directed by Rob Hardy, this episode. And uh, as far as guest cast, we got a, a a quick vocal cameo from Alan Tudyk as Mr. Nobody. We got to see Phil Morris as Silas Stone. We got the return of Charmin Lee as uh, Vic's mom, Eleanor Stone, who gets yes. a little bit more of a of scene with Vic in the hospital as when he was a kid. Uh, we got the introduction of Bethany, Allen, Bethany Ann Lind. As Clara Steele, the adult Clara Steele, although it's not really her as we find out. It's more of like a, a hallucination on Cliff's part. Yes. Uh, yeah, she, uh, she's he's... been in some ep- couple episodes of uh, – she's been in Stranger Things and The Walking Dead. I just thought I'd mention that real quick. No, I'm glad. I wonder if um, if we ever see her in real life, will they use the same actors? You would hope so. I would think so. Yeah. Because – I. And it, Vic's seen her online, so he knows what she looks like. So I have yeah. to think that um, that they're going to keep that same actress. Yeah, that makes sense for you. Uh, we got the return of Alan Heckner as Bump Weathers, although as we find out, again, it's not really Bump Weathers. Yeah. Uh, but we haven't seen him since the pilot episode, and uh, he's been in an episode of The Walking Dead. little side note. Uh, we got to see – uh, younger versions of Rita, Larry, and Vic in this episode, and Cliff, yes. I should say. So we got to, um, uh, yeah. So we got uh, Lana Turner as young Rita. We got Braxton Alexander as young Larry. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Braylon Rankins as young Vic, and Gibson Todd as young Cliff. So we got the little mini Doom Patrol in this episode. And then uh, we got the introduction of um, Larry's parents, who are Joanne Willette as Debbie Trainer and A. Smith Harrison as Gerald Trainer. Mm-hmm. And we also got the introduction of Cliff's dad and mom, who aren't named, no. but uh, they're played by Matthew Blum and Caitlin Baden, I guess. Mm-hmm. So uh, interesting cast. Uh, not really a lot of notable actors, but. Um, Oh, and we also got the return of Kyle Clements as John Bowers, who is, again, more of a like a memory hallucination yeah. uh, in Larry's uh, part. So um, other than that, uh, some intro- – oh, I forgot. We also got the introduction of Dave McDonald as Jane's daddy. And who- we will have to talk <laughs> about that scene. Oh, we will. So yeah, so, yeah, we're going to see more of Jane's daddy, I'm sure. And he's been in a few episodes. He's been in uh, episodes of Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. He's been in The Gifted and the 2017 revival of MacGyver. Ah, okay. So uh, uh, just thought I'd bring that up So for all you trivia buffs. And uh, not going to have any theme this week because of the way this episode was structured. Okay. Uh, we're going to kind of break this down into more smaller segments, but we're going to have a little mo- couple more of them. All right, sounds good. So I think the first topic I want to talk about is Rita. Okay. This week. I'm kind of give everybody their spotlight segment this week. This good. is how I'm going to, how I'm going to do that. So we're going to talk Rita because we kind of – she's the first flashback in the episode. And uh, we kind of get a flashback to her in 1930s Hollywood as we see young Rita, who, as we find out, Rita Farr is her stage name, not her real name. And she And she did not – I was thinking – she was going to actually tell the team during the therapy, therapy, yeah. her real name. I, right. I actually thought that was going to happen, but it didn't. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if that's going to – because uh, as far as I know, Rita Farr doesn't have a real name in the comics. Right. So yeah, that is – I mean, So I this is something new for the show, so I'm wondering yeah. if there's a deliberate reason where we don't know Rita's real name. Yeah. Maybe, but then maybe we'll find that out later. And and the reason I'm thinking right is because you see how sh- young she was, right? And talk about stage parents. 
Yes. Um, you know, and, this, and these were stage parents that this is pretty early because this was, you know, 1930s Hollywood. Yeah, and in, in the setting, so so yeah. stage parents wasn't really a thing until, but apparently, uh, Rita's parents were the some of the first, I guess. And it was, I always think it's interesting. And I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it, but with right. child actors, how much of it is the child and how much it is the parent? Right. For example, um, you know, we've talked to um, I've talked to Rob Southgate, our yes. um, our glorious podcast our, leader, our, our executive you know, producer. Yes. Yeah. Molly, his daughter, is very active in acting and right. and she he it's very clear it's she's driving this and her mom and dad are very proud of her and are helping her. Right. Um, and, and I, you get the feeling that Rita was in wanting this, but it also, they were almost a little too, you know, well, well we won't have her go into school. Right. Because, you well, know, you know, so they're already taking it to like ridiculous extremes. They're not having yes. her go to school because, uh, so that she won't get distracted by other children, as we find out. Yes. So which means they're not going to keep her educated. Right. And so therefore she's just going full force and uh, into the acting thing. And and I and, do. And it's and it's kind. Yeah. I think it's partially why Rita is the way she is. Is that um, that uh, you know she's the she's her life is essentially she realizes a facade. Yes. You know, it's a complete illusion, and, and and she starts to kind of get an understanding of she she realizes this. She starts to become more aware of how her life is a facade, but then she also is concerned about how if she doesn't have Rita Farr in her life, what is she apart from Rita Farr? Yeah, and this was way before homeschooling was a thing. Yes. Um. So. Um. Yeah. I. I had a couple of mixed emotions about this uh, sequence. Yes, Charles. Um, it and it's always interesting, and I, and I can't. I'm not going to get the phrase right, right? But yeah, um, seeing a splinter in your uh, neighbor's eye while you've got a log in your own. Okay. You know, I was kind of you know Rita just just. You, you've had this breakdown. You know you don't want to be yourself. Uh, you know, you, you're already trying to be a better person. You should be able to get your stuff together. You should well, be okay. I, and then I look at me, yeah, who struggled with weight my whole life. Like yeah. someone could say, Jesse, just, you know, exercise more, eat less. It, it, you right. know, just do it. And so – it's, it's it's easy to to talk about, right. but to actually do it is, is much harder. And when you think about all the baggage she's had, right? Um, and and I also don't know for as much as um, they talk about the chief helping them to a certain degree, he's guy he's kind of give them a safe place for them to run in place. They don't. Right. I mean, you know, I don't know if they don't. They don't. They don't, they don't on. address things head on. It's more right. of like a yeah. It, it, you're calling it a safe space is probably a very good analogy. Yeah. Because the the chief realizes that these people couldn't fu function in normal society. Right. So so he's collected them, but yeah, he's not addressing and trying to. Uh, I mean, he, he he tries to counsel. Like right. people, people like Jane and whatnot, but uh, it's not enough for what no. they need. It's not enough. So now, it, without the chief, they're actually forced to interact with each other, and mm -hmm. this is where all the truths and all the you know all, all the secrets and the lies are coming out. Uh, absolutely, yes. And they're actually having to confront things head on. Here. Yes. Um, so there's a great after this kind of flashback where we we've um with rita meeting this uh movie star named ethel singer uh we kind of jump to the present and rita um is having like you said trouble getting herself together literally 
Yeah. Uh, she crawls out of bed trying to get herself together. She ends up uh, losing cohesion and, and slumps down a uh, furnace grate. Yeah. And she and, ends up in the furnace. And, and she has to kind of like will herself out of that predicament because yeah, nobody and, else can hear her. And, and hit her – her morning mantra, yes. right of I, of you yeah. know focus, you know I am Rita, I am Rita. Yeah, the whole you know, the, like the, the person who is breathing is me. Yeah. That whole thing, yes. yeah. The whole um, and she uses it to kind of like form herself, like the person with an arm is me, the person yeah. with another arm is me. Yeah, I mean, um, it it was it was interesting to see. And this kind of – and you you wonder, is that one of the things the chief has helped her to do and is a coping mechanism versus trying to go directly to the source of why she feels that way so that she can be more comfortable with herself? Right. You know? Well, and even though she has a breakthrough in this episode – yeah. Uh, with realizing that, you know, that um, Rita Farr is a facade. Yeah. There's there's still some things she hasn't addressed. And exactly. I think that's why she's still having trouble. I think so, too. Um, like the whole thing with the – when she gets down in the furnace room that mm -hmm. um, she sees a cradle after she crawls out. Yeah. And she's like, I'm really sick and tired of having all these baby – creepy baby images, you know, in front of me. And then yes. she kind of immediately starts to blame herself, like maybe I deserve this. Mm -hmm. And so again, it's Rita's self-esteem that Absolutely. affects her affects her control. And it's only when you know, like she gets back to the others, but she's in like the chief's wheelchair because her legs haven't formed yet. So she's like almost like a version of the chief wheeling in. Yes. And then um, when she f starts to open up. Then she actually gets her legs back, and so and so again, this is just she's not confronting things, and when she starts confronting things, she has better self esteem about herself. And I love that they dress her in red a lot. Well, um, it's, it's, it's 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 an homage to the um, the Doom Patrol uniforms exactly. from the original. Yeah, we see a lot of the the red and white theme. Yeah, especially and, uh, in Rita's wardrobe. Yeah, so I I like that a lot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and. Um, you wonder if – I would like to see – I would like to see if – I'm going to be early uh, predictions. Okay. But I would like to see by the end of this uh, first season that she is more in control of herself. Right. And that um, it would be very rare she would lose control. I yes. think that would be an important um, character development I want to see in this first season. Yeah, I think well, I think you know she's obviously learning more about herself, and I think yeah, that I think as the season progresses, she's going to finally become to more terms with herself, mm -hmm. and and when they have to actually confront Mister Nobody, she'll be much more of an asset than a liability. We've talked yeah. about that. So. Um, uh, Last thing really I want to talk about with Rita is that she kind of uh, backs up Cliff's claims that they, mm -hmm. everybody needs to open up to each other. She's like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but yes, Cliff is right. Yeah. And, and you know, like we do need to open up. Otherwise, Mr. Nobody's going to kick our ass, basically. And um, so she's kind of supportive of him with that, even though he's having a lot of problems that we'll talk about here shortly. Yeah. So. All right. Anything else about Rita before we move on? No, no. I, I thought that was really well done, and um, there it came. Um, seeing what happened uh, led to one of my lines I'll give at the end of the season. <laughs> okay. At the end of the discussion. Okay, great. Uh, topic number two, Larry. Let's talk about Larry, negative man. Um, we get a flashback with him. Uh, to 1935 North Dakota, mm -hmm. where we see his parents uh, arguing about uh, Larry's sexuality. So apparently they're they're kind of in denial, although they realize that they're in denial over his sexuality, especially 
since, hey, it's the 1930s, and obviously um, homosexuality was very frowned upon back then. But apparently Larry got himself into some trouble by playing doctor with another boy at school, and uh, this has obviously caused some trouble in the household. Yes. And uh, Larry overhears this, young Larry, and I think it's it, – we found out it's – kind of part of why he has this self-loathing toward himself, which is what he addresses uh, during the course of this episode. And actually, his, he has a bit of a breakthrough as well. And so I want to talk about Larry and what do you think about him in this story. Yeah, um, you know, I was on board um, vocal very at the very beginning that um, I didn't I didn't think they needed this um, twist of he – being a homosexual, right. I've since backed off and realized that was actually a very important part right. of this story they're trying to tell. Um, so this is continuing the um, the the theme of him self hating himself, right? Uh, for not taking control of his life. So you know, similar to what Rita is going through, he's going through similar things. And and I do like that him and um, negative man or whatever the, the energy negative, the being neg the, the negative spirit yeah yeah um, are starting to try to talk to each other to right. try to um, have a true symbiotic relationship. So um, I thought that was really interesting, and I did think it was a great scene. Him, you know, kind of in his his little almost like pilot hat yes. you know it's just a you know it, it's one of the old time yes. you know hats with the earmuffs right and him playing with this plane goggles. and yeah. he's got a as, a as a kid yeah yeah and then to overhear his parents and without too much judgment this is the 30 right um there was a lot of there was not a lot of tolerance for alternate lifestyles especially in rural america Right, because um, this so, is North North Dakota, as rural yeah. as it gets. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, that's just crazy. Yeah, and, and I would that would scar. Yeah, I I know that's got to scar him. Well, and, and obviously it does. I mean, not just yeah. because he has scars, literally, because of yeah. his accident later on, but yeah. uh, but obviously it, because of that fear, mm -hmm. and you know, like his mom is all we find out was all upset because. She's all afraid that, oh, if this comes out, we're going to lose our social standing in the school and church and, you know, because God forbid what church people might think yeah. of this. So um, so Larry feels this intense pressure to keep this secret. Yes. And, you know, he ha even though he has these feelings, um, he's just afraid to come out. And which is one of the reasons why, you know, like John, when he's in when he. He's older and he gets involved with this relationship with John. He feels this, you know, like he's even though John wants him to come out and be comfortable with who he is, Larry's still afraid of this because remember, he's still in the military. And yes. that kind of thing is frowned upon, which is one of the things Larry brings up um, that there was this pressure in the military against this kind of behavior. So, yes. so. The job he chose, you know, the the vocation he chose was made his reasons for keeping that part of his life secret even stronger. And so – but John just wanted him to be comfortable with himself. So when the negative spirit creates this memory of, of this time when – just before his accident when he with, was with John and they were kind of making out in the back of a pickup truck during a sunset and whatnot – um, you know, that he has John, and the question is whether John is actually the negative spirit talking to Larry, um, depending on how you look at it, uh, um, was waiting for Larry to kind of finally open up about it. Yeah. In which, in which he does. He has a breakthrough himself where, you know, he talks about how frustrating it is and, and he talks about how insecure – and he calls himself a gaslighting, insecure hypocrite Yes, uh, who ruined other people's lives instead of owning his own problems. And 
Um, so this is this is you know something that Larry has never really admitted to himself. And so yes. um, as a result, um, when they get back to, you know, we're kind of back in the present and Larry wakes up from this memory and talks to the other members of the Doom Patrol, um, he starts opening up. And now Cliff, you know, and again, we don't know how because of how much how screwed up he is at this point. Mm hmm. He calls out Larry and says, well, you know, like, OK, you know, like he interrupts Larry and says, OK, well, you're gay, right? Yeah. And Larry's like, well, what I was going to say was this. <laughs> yeah, that was great. You know, um, I, I love how bad. So he's Cliff... like trying to out Larry before Larry's yeah. ready to out himself here. I, I love how bad Cliff was at being the therapy leader. But the energy he had yes. and that, you know. Um, Brent Frazier was just all over the place. And we'll talk about yeah, that here yeah. later. But he was uh, great. Um, I did. He's I just also, catalyst for causing all this conflict yeah. in the group. I did think it was very interesting of watching Larry wake up and go through all the bandages. Right. Um, I. And and I. I know and that they originally kind of talked about that um, he needed, you know, the bandages stop the radiation from leaking. Right. But then why does he sleep without them? I mean, I guess you could say the bedroom's lead lined or something. Yeah, but... it is. What it is, because you notice when Vic pounds on the door, there's that metallic sound. Yeah. So it's like he's in a, like an isolation tank. Okay. Almost. Um, kind of like, kind of like when he, like he was, you know, when he was just recovering from his accident. Yeah. That uh, that it's this kind of isolation lead, probably lead lined uh, room, and mm -hmm. uh, to keep the radiation from coming out and poisoning the others. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but does, it, but it get it, but allows him to actually take the bandages off. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, Good. So it allows him a bit of freedom, but um, but yeah, so. Um, you know, when he's with the others, um, Larry's, you know, at first he's thinking the therapy thing is like a waste of time. But then he's like opening up about not being able to touch anybody for 60 years. Yes. Which if you think about it, that's horrible. That is. And and he's ta he finally opens up about his self-loathing. Right. And how he hates himself. And, you know, like he, the, John was the last person he touched and he loved him. So he actually admits that, yeah, I'm gay. Mm -hmm. And but he drove John away. But he says he's like Larry says he's tired of the self-loathing. He's hurting himself and he's hurting the spirit inside of him. Right. And uh, so again, another big breakthrough for Larry, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, anything else about Larry before we move on? Not at all. Okay. Topic number three. Vic Cyborg. Vic Stone Cyborg. So. Uh, Vic's flashback, we go to 2002 Detroit, and we see that young Vic has a dislocated sh shoulder because he decided to go climbing trees, even though his father warned him not to. Yes. And he's all worried about what his father's going to say to him. But fortunately for Vic, his mother is far more understanding about it and is willing to keep the secret. Yeah, I thought that was a great – I mean the mom knew he learned his lesson, right. and um, you know, I would argue she probably told uh, Silas later and said don't say anything to him um, so he'll know um, you know, because that's what parents do. Yeah. Um, but I thought that was a really good moment, and, um, and it shows how much he – he loved his mother and right. And well, he obviously got along better has. with her yes. than he did his father. Yeah. So that when she dies, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, well, I'm sure Vic's part of what Vic's inner thinking is that, well, why did mom have to die? Why couldn't it have been you? Absolutely. So, you know, it's just like Vic's with the, the parent he likes the least. Yes. And so that's kind of had this this affected their relationship, I think. 
and it was very it the scene of him with the um similar to tinder act act yeah. right yeah. Yeah, they, uh, with this this fictional app they call Cash, yeah. as in ca- as in casual, um, was really interesting because all these people, you know, um, star groupies, yes, woo, cyborg JLA, woohoo, yes, um, it's it's always I love the I love the idea that you know in this world, you know the. You, they're embracing the fact that you would be, you know, superheroes would be celebrities. Right. Um, so I thought that was interesting, and I thought how silly of Vic to, well, take away anyone who mentioned Cyborg because he he's he wants he's, to be he wants to be people be interested in him, not right. Who the superhero that he is? Yeah, it's kind of like the whole, um, the whole. I you know I want to be loved for me, right? Not for my money or not for my powers. And um, all of a sudden, oops, um, you find out and and heartbreaking that the um, his internal processor or whatever. You know yeah. his his his, control, uh, his his operating system. Yeah, is Grid. ends up being very smart, and yeah. kind of its own personality. To well, you want to meet them, and I I don't know I don't know if you watch Orville. Oh uh, yeah, I, I do watch the Orville. But I thought of that with the um, the scene where um, Isaac dates the doctor. Yes. And, you know, he's already done everything, the research, because that's what he would do. And she's kind of – the whole point of dating is to get to know each other. Um, so I thought of that. And then when he sees his actual picture and she is, oh, disturbed by it, you know, it just crushes him. Yes. I, I just – I he should have seen that coming, but I understand why he didn't. And it just – it broke my heart, Charles. Yeah. Well, the um, – you know, Grid, his operating system. Yeah. Uh, I kind of talked about this a, little, a few episodes back where we kind of needed to keep an eye on Grid. Yeah. And and if you notice in this episode, um, Grid talks about like, you know, Vic, Vic kind of confronts him as like, Grid, why are you like going into my subconscious? You know, and trying mm-hmm. to like, you know, make your own decisions for me. Yeah. So, and he talks about that. Well, ever since the reboot, um, apparently, whatever um, bandwidth issues. Like he talks about, like he was being throttled before. Yeah. So essentially, like there was some like um, safeguards about what Grid could do to Vic. Mm-hmm. But those apparently are gone since the reboot. Yes. So Grid has more effect over um, Cyborg, Vic, than he realizes. <laughs> and I'm, and I, th- I still think it's like, well, you need to kind of keep an eye on Grid, because now that those safeguards are off, and Vic and Grid is kind of just diving into Vic's subconscious without telling him, what well, else is he doing? And what concerns me is that. Um, He's gone from one controlling person to another. Right. Um, his father, and now then, all of a sudden, right. it's Grid. Um, yeah. So now he yeah. goes. Yeah, he goes through this whole thing with the whole reason we find out he stole the Sat Key mm-hmm. last week was that he wanted to reprogram things so that he would be a closed system. Right. So that so that his father couldn't affect him. Yes. And which he does, he tells his father that. Um, and they they have an interesting discussion where, um, you know, they talk about that, uh, Vic calls him out and he goes, oh, he goes, why didn't you shut off all these notifications? Mm-hmm. And we find out that the, that Silas put in some parental controls into right. him and Silas tells him, Hey, you know, like, uh, there's like a few days where you couldn't even use your legs mm-hmm. and, you needed to focus. 
So you didn't need all that distraction, all those distractions. Right. And so, again, it was, like you said, it was controlling. So Silas was controlling him and um, not leaving it up to Vic to decide what he wanted. And uh, this obviously is some friction, and we find out when Vic kind of opens up to the rest of the Doom Patrol that he's never really trusted his father. Yeah, exactly. And this just, you know, the, all, all this other stuff since he became Cyborg is just proof of why he can't trust his father. Yes. But but he realizes also that, okay, so I've never trusted my father, but at this point now it seems like my father doesn't trust me. Right. And that bothers him. So what do mm-hmm. you think about that moment? Um, it's – there's a lot going on there. Um, we were, you know, it, it's. It, I love the depth of Vic's father, right? And you can make the argument that you know he everything he's doing is to try to protect Vic, and you yeah. understand. I mean, one of the things that you know happens with a parent and a child is a child has to get its own independence. And especially in the teenage years, um, people will tell you that that's natural. This this rebellion is them being trying to get on their own. And so I think Vic is still going through that, even though he's a little bit older, right? Uh, because of all the – and his father's the whole, you know – him being a cyborg and all this, there's it's a very mixed up um, relationship. There's very a yeah. lot of tie-ins. I liked it. I thought um, it's very interesting. I I like that Vic is making this choice to move forward, but I, I'm not sure if it's going to work out for him um, in the long run. Yeah, you know, it, I just I'm not sure. Yeah, obviously he's hasn't found it because we find out through the the, um, the dating profile thing that yeah. you know the, the the one girl that's actually interested in talking to him once he sends her a picture yeah. current picture of who he is she's repulsed by that yes so uh, that just adds to his feelings of being a freak an outsider yes and and his loneliness yeah and that that. The kind of person he – he was probably a player back in the day because he played football. Yes. So he probably had no problems you know, getting girls oh. when he was younger, but then his accident happened, and now that's been taken away from him. Absolutely. And um, yeah. Now he does uh, – Vic's interesting to hear because he also admits to the others that he killed his mom, or at least he feels responsible for right. killing his mom. And he and his dad don't talk about it. And um, he thought that Cyborg – becoming Cyborg would be a way to kind of make everything right again. Yes. And um, – but then Mr. Nobody comes along, and that's kind of a theme you notice throughout everybody's stories is that Mr. Nobody kind of plays on their – preys on their insecurities. Yes. And, and with Vic, he preys on his insecurity by saying – what well, you know. Whispering in his ear, going like, "How do you know that your memories are real?" Yes. So he has this self doubt because of who he is, and it's like, "Well, I, I don't know if you know if I can trust my own memories." Yeah. Which is Absolutely. kind of important. So, so there's a lot more going on with Vic that probably still needs worked out. Absolutely. But he, at least he's opening up to the others. All right. Anything else about Vic before nope. we move on? All right. Topic number four: Crazy Jane. All right. Uh, we this is kind of a big one, a little bit. Uh, we go have a flashback to 1950 Arkansas, where we see Jane as a baby crying in her crib, and she's being watched rather ominously and rather creepily by her father. Um. Uh, and and whose voice we heard in the previous episode. Then, you know, when uh, the when Jane was being sworn by all those puzzle pieces and that hand yes. reached out, that was her daddy's voice. And so what do you what do you think about that? 
so I was very nervous, Charles, when he walked into her room right. with a lit cigarette. Mm-hmm. Um, now, granted, it was 1950, but... No, but you hear, you have heard stories about people being abused, yes. children being abused. Right. So I was nervous the whole time. Um, they They didn't go there... But they did go with the idea that she's she's needing comfort, she's needing help, and um, he just is blind to it. He right. just could care less. Right, he's um, checked out. Yeah. Um, a, he just he just sit, like stares at her as yeah. she cries. Doesn't try to hold her. Yeah. Doesn't try to console her. And uh, very detached from her yeah and very disturbingly yeah it very disturbing very 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 disturbing yeah and you know that um there is a this will come i mean you can tell this hurt her yes you know on her and and we'll have to see what happens but yeah i thought that was really interesting yeah i also um it's i think just i want to put it this way it's yeah that whole thing with her daddy is something very important to her character, and you need, yeah. you need to – like every time that is addressed, you need to study it closely. And I I also um, – the way she the, – the way her and – Vic fought. Yes. I thought was um, heartbreaking. You mean Cliff? Yeah, Cliff. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Sorry. The way that Cliff and her fought is heartbreaking, but at the same time, it it's so real. Yeah, they were very raw and brutal and harsh to each other. Yeah. And two, I mean, things that you go can't be unsaid. Yes. Um, and um, and it's coming out in the middle of, of Vic having this breakdown. Yes. And, like physical breakdown. Yeah. And when – and what's, what's always sad about these kind of situations, Charles, is when – if you and I are having a disagreement and, um, and we're both – being really harsh against each other. Um, what normally happens, though, is one of us will go past the line that's mm-hmm. there, and then all of a sudden the other stuff doesn't matter. It's just um, all the other mean stuff has gone away. It's like, oh, you went there? And, yes. and, it just, and that's exactly what this happened when he mentioned the whole, um, you know, like they only like yeah. that, that he only like that Cliff mentions that he only likes uh one of uh Jane's 64 personalities. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only one we we only like one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And um yeah, that's a it's a very brutal moment. It is. And even the rest of the Doom Patrol is just like they're really <laughs> pissed. They're just pissed off at Cliff. Yeah. Like how could you say that, you idiot? And then, you know, this is after Jane had kind of riled him up and saying that, well, you know, she's very harsh to him, too. She goes, like, you're never going to be a father because you're not a real man. Yes, exactly. So that's kind of one of the reasons that triggered why Cliff said what he said. Mm -hmm. So at some point they're going to have to kind of patch this up somehow. Um, But right now it's not looking good at the moment. No. But – Jane, uh, as we we're kind of brought into the present with her, uh, we see her painting a picture of the chief, a painting of the chief. Yes. And she paints in white over it. She goes the word bastard, and then she takes the painting and she punches it repeatedly, over and over. Now, what, I have a theory about why that whole thing is going on. What's your theory about why Jean is uh, mad at the chief so much? (sighs) 
this last week's episode where she saw that she had her room right that had the locks um yes. the whole the notion that he that basically he, he, he throws he was away going, his old toys right right and the broken ones yeah and yeah. and that really shook her because you know we saw the episode before right you know where he rescues her from the asylum yes and and says you know you can trust me i'm there for you and so I believe in her life, starting with her parents and all the way through all right. the people who have disappointed her, all the people that have let her down, all the people who abused her. She has faith that the chief cares about her, supports her, and will always be there. And to see him – to see proof that um, he isn't that person would shake her to the core, and I think it right. has. right. Yeah, I yeah. think I think that's I think that's definitely a good part of it. Yeah. I think that um, my take on it is that Jane views the chief as kind of like a replacement father. Yes, absolutely. And she did feel that trust, and she felt betrayed of that trust. And mm-hmm. um, it kind of goes back to her own daddy issues, yes. and that she thought that the chief was somebody who could fill that void, but after learning more about him realizes that feels that she can't trust him. And yeah, a lot of her, because she has so much rage and anger inside her, uh, that's coming out. The, a lot of the personalities that feel this way are coming out. Hammerhead, you notice we're seeing a lot of, yes, we are. And, um, because she is so angry at the moment and, yes. you know, it's like, like she's feeling let down by, by the chief. She's feeling let by, down by cliff and all of this, all of these feelings um, lead to not a breakthrough with Jane in this episode. It leads more to a breakdown. Yeah. And in a rather harsh way, she goes and she goes to that stash of uh, videotapes, the old VHS videotapes of, of the chief interviewing her various personalities and yeah. counseling them. Um. And she gets mad. She smashes some of the tapes, and she get, and in a really heartbreaking moment, she's you can see the conflict within her because she's at war. She's having her personalities are are struggling for control here. Absolutely. Because on the one hand, one personality is angry and smashing the tapes, while Jane, another part of her, is just horrified. She's like, "No, no, stop it, stop it," and. She's unable to control her her own body because of the other yeah. personalities taking control and doing what another part of her doesn't want to be done. So there's this this inner struggle going on, and uh, again, Diana Guerrero just killing it. Oh, it. she's just amazing. Yeah, so Absolutely. really powerful yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, really amazing stuff. So. Uh, yeah, Jane unfortunately doesn't have much of a, a breakthrough like uh, Cl- like Vic and Larry and Cliff. I no. think. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else about Jane before we move on? Nope. Okay. Last topic. Cliff, Admiral Whiskers, and Mister Nobody. Yeah. So, uh, Cliff, as we kind of start the off the episode, uh, something seems a little off with Cliff. Vic comes around knocking on everybody's door to bring them to the meeting. Cliff just kind of sits there, doesn't say anything, which is very uncharacteristic for Cliff, and doesn't move. And um, throughout the course of the episode, as we see him interacting with others, he starts to go off the hinges and starts losing control bit by bit. And we're not quite sure why, what's caused all this. And we get a flashback with him to 1961 South Florida, where we see him younger in a trailer park, and he overhears his parents fighting with his dad promising he'll be better, kind of like uh, pretty much identical to when Cliff was promising to be better to his wife as an adult, if you notice. There's a little bit of a parallel there. And 
Um, he's getting all mad about the hole in his arm and Bump taking everything away from him. He gets all paranoid and angry. And um, we see this scene where he confronts um, Bump about, you know, who what he feels is, you know, Bump taking his daughter away from him. And he lashes out and they have a fight. And, and so what did you think of that moment? Were you shocked by that? I, I – Where he just busts down the door and you so, know, he's scream, screaming in the bus all the way there and – it – looking back, I should have seen that this was obviously some kind of dream sequence. Right. But they like did it – Like a hallucination. Yeah. yeah, but I did not feel that at the time. I was just um, – I was shocked at the way Bump um, – the callousness – Right. You know, because at first he's like, you know, she had no one else. I had to do this. Yeah, we thought you were dead, dude. And, yeah. uh, you know, but then then he's all like, well, you know, she totally messed up my bachelor game, bro. Yeah. And, and you know, looking back, you're like, no, you – the pic- the guy showed in those pictures yeah. would not have said things like that. And I was right. really confused by it. Right. So, so you're, so you're um, like, where is this coming from? Yeah, and and so now then you once you understand why you go, okay, that makes a lot of sense. I um, it, it's it turn, as it turns out, yeah, it's this this big hallucination, and it's essentially yeah. how Vic or excuse me, Cliff is viewing a uh, bump, not yeah. necessarily how the real bump here. And I also liked a lot the, you know. Sometimes the whole replaying the day through everyone's different viewpoint is a trope. Yes. You know, sometimes they do it too often. It worked in this one, at least from my perspective. I thought it worked really yeah. well. Right. And to hear them. Because Vic- they, all, they all connect to this big fight between yeah. Vic and Cliff outside. Yeah. And, and to see that um, – because you would think – that Vic and uh, Cliff could fight. I mean, you see right. that very, very easy. Right, but because they had that antagonistic relationship. Yeah, but when you when you see that, what was thinking? It was really well done. Yeah, um, and we find and, out that the the, the, big, the reason Cliff is fighting with Vic is that he thinks Vic is Bump. Yes, that's what he sees in his head. And, yeah, like he sees all the other various yeah. Doom Patrol members as um, other people. Like he sees Jane as his daughter Clara and whatnot. Yeah. So so he's really pissed off at Vic, thinking he's Bump, and they fight. And that 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 kind of leads to the revelation of that the whole thing is a, a hallucination because um, Bump, and I'm using air quotes here shoots Vic with a shotgun, but it has a blast like yeah. cy- cyborg sonic cannon. Yeah, and do um, – we aren't sure how um, our evil villain, surprise villain, made yep. the change. We assume he went in and was pushing on the brain or something or what, yeah, well, chewing yeah. – uh, chewing on wires? I, I don't know. Well, yeah. So, so over the course of this episode, at the end is when we get the big payoff, the very like out of nowhere, left field payoff. Yeah. Where where you find out that like way back in the pilot episode, when Cliff was driving off in the bus, he ran over a rat. The mother, yeah. the mother of this character that's named Admiral Whiskers. Yes. And. In this really heartbreaking moment, you see the rat just – the Admiral Whisker is like watching his mother being killed and going, no, yeah. you know, he's screaming. And you're like, um, you know, like, what is this? What is this? And then all of a sudden, Mr. Nobody starts talking to Admiral Whiskers. And Admiral Whiskers is like, wait, what, you know, like, what's all this? What's a narrator? What, yeah. You know, like, I'm just a woodland creature. I don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah, and this – Stay focused. Stay focused. It's so funny. Yeah. 
Yeah. But to, but then it has this really dark turn because um, Mr. Nobody essentially manipulates Admiral Whiskers, and it's funny just to say the name Admiral Whiskers. Yes. Um, to seek his revenge on Cliff for killing his mom. And like he goes and sees Vic and, or Cliff in the window and he goes like, yeah, there he is, the angel of death. And yeah. he, he kind of has his own little Inigo Montoya moment from Princess Bride. Where it's like, my name is Admiral Whiskers. You killed my mother. Prepare to die kind of thing. I was hoping you caught that. That was oh, yeah. so perfect. <laughs> yes. So he, so that what he does, that hole in, in Cliff's arm because where that was where Vic's finger ended up. That was removed mm-hmm. by Silas. So he's got this hole in his arm. So Admiral Whiskers crawls inside Cliff. And starts messing around with his mechanics. Yeah. And, and probably crawled all the way up to his – where his brain connects to his metal body. Yeah. And starts messing with the wires that are in there, which probably caused the hallucinations. And I'm guessing he probably did that at the direction of Mr. Nobody. Like Mr. Nobody knew how to mess with him. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So, um, so essentially Admiral Whiskers, under the direction of Mr. Nobody, knew how to – Control Vic or control. I keep saying Vic. Control Cliff mm-hmm. and um, manipulate him. And so this, as we find out, is the reason that he has a breakdown and why he's acting so weird throughout the entire episode. Like why he's like trying to eat toast, and you know, even though he has no stomach or whatnot, and um, why he's just having all this emotional breakdown and not really um, – he's just out of control. He's essentially losing it as Rita points out. Yeah. And, and Rita is you know, just like, hey, Cliff, get a grip already. And But he just keeps losing it and losing it. And he, and he starts having – like you see him when, when Vic is talking. Cliff's legs are spe- like shaking you yes. know, rapidly. Like you know, it's some, something's obviously not right with Cliff. And he ends up having like a seizure once uh, he really lashes out. And then all of a sudden, um, Vic takes, him, takes Cliff down. And then everybody's kind of stunned when um, this is after Jane had walked out. Yes. And, and Admiral Whiskers crawls out of Cliff's mouth mm-hmm. and just kind of looks at the others and then takes off out the fr- open front door. Yeah. I. I love that reveal. Yeah. Um, so basically the, all this was Mr. Nobody's plans to get the Doom Patrol fighting with one another. Yes. And ca- sowing the seeds of discord and distrust and causing all these secrets and lies to come out and have all these horrible things said to one another. Yeah. So so that they obviously won't be a threat. Mm-hmm. So a very indirect way of of messing with the Doom Patrol. As it turns out. So what did you think of that revelation? Oh, I, I loved it. I loved it because it explained so much. Right. Um, I, I love the idea that he's sitting there um, not you know, saying things that he necessarily may not think of. Right. Um, it, it's just wonderful. Um, I, I was very, very happy. I, I wanted to... Um, it. This episode was already a great one. Yes, I loved the whole therapy, therapy, <laughs> and how he kept, you know, Cliff kept, yeah, yeah, man, let's talk about it. Yeah, share. You know, right. it was just just working over and over and over again. And then when we get this great reveal, you're like, oh, this is so. Awesome. He explains <laughs> so much. I, I just I love this. Yeah. In, in, in so many ways. Yeah. It's just and it, you know and it brought the whole episode full circle. As yeah. you know, the ending of the episode is essentially the beginning the beginning of the story for this episode. Yes. And um, yeah, it was it was pretty well written. I thought. Mm-hmm. This, all yeah. right. Anything else about this episode before we move on? Um. No, I just uh, I, I loved how everyone was talking. Um, it it is um, it it just was wonderful. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Yeah, it is, it is great stuff. Do you have any favorite lines of the episode? So I do. So I have to be careful with this one. Okay. But the episode starts with yeah. a great monologue. So Cliff by going – Cliff, Cliff, yes. Yes. Look, all right. we all want to find the chief. To find the chief, we got to go through Mr. Nobody. And I think we can all agree if we don't get our blank together right here, right now, Mr. Nobody is going to frack us. He's going to frack us in our brains. He's going to frack us in our hearts. He's going to frack us in our souls. Now, I don't know what kind of freaky stuff your souls are into, and I'm not one to judge, but I want to keep my soul unfracked. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good. That was a good line. That was a great line. Yeah, I was. I was going to choose that one, but I was like, well, that, you know, that might be too tempting for me, so I let that yeah. one go. Now, um, and there's also what I found very funny. Yeah. Is when Rita shows up in the uh, wheelchair. Yeah. And I didn't write it down. Cliff said. I did. Okay, because well, he didn't cuss. Yeah. Which I just it was so funny. Well, what was well, the line? Well, well, this may not be the line you're referring okay. to. So why don't okay. you go ahead and say you remember kind of what the line was? Well, about? it was something like, um, "What's long with your um, with, with going on with your legs?" Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've got, like I've got that. that. Okay. I've got that. Okay. okay, go ahead. Okay, so so the line you're referring to, uh, Cliff is is talking to Rita, like you said, and Cliff goes. Come on, we have no idea what's going on with each other. Look at Rita. Rita, what the heck is going on with your legs? Yeah, stop you there. Exactly. He said heck. Yes. Not hell. Not right. F. Not F. Not yeah, F. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes, go ahead. But, but yeah, he did say heck. He's like, what the heck is going on with your legs? You can tell me. You can tell us. And Rita goes, I was stuck in a furnace and nobody could hear my screams. And Cliff goes, See, a powerful metaphor for what we're all feeling. And Rita goes, it was a literal furnace. So that was good. And the, yeah, now, I, had and to, I kind of I kind of wondered if a lot of that was also Mr. Nobody talking through Cliff. Could be. Um, I love that. Uh, and then he says, even better, literal furnaces. We need to talk about this stuff. See, it didn't uh, yes. sound a lot like like Cliff. That's why yeah. I kind of wondered if Mr. Nobody was taking Could be. Vocal, vocal control over Cliff and a lot of that stuff, which is probably maybe why he was so confrontational with everybody. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I had that exchange as well. Yeah. Um, the only other one I have, and I just thought this was so perfect, yeah. when uh, Larry is pouring out his heart, right, and he goes. That was a joke. These bandages are the yeah. death of nuance, of all yes. nuance. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm only sharing this because this is the thing that Mr. Nobody shoved in my face. Yeah. What's left of my face? Yes, exactly. And he's like, nobody, he doesn't get a reaction. And he's like, ah, that was a joke. Yes. <laughs> like, these bandages are the death of all nuance. Yeah. yeah that was good. Uh, I like this uh, exchange between Cyborg and Grid where – uh, cyborg, you know, Vic is out there like doing pull-ups in the yard, and he goes, "Grid, have I ever said booyah?" And Grid goes, <laughs> you have, "And Grid goes, you have said booyah thirty-one times since the accident, well above the threshold for a catchphrase." That was a great line. Yes, That's of it course was. a nod to um, uh, uh, Cyborg's catchphrase in the Teen Titans animated series. Yes. So that's where a lot of the fans like – that's why every time you know you everybody wants Cyborg like in Justice League movie or whatnot to say booyah. Um, you don't have any other quotes you said? No, no. Go okay, for all right. It. Well, I got a couple more here. Uh, exchange between Cliff and Larry uh, where he's trying to like – this is where they just started sitting down talking about their therapy. And Cliff goes, well, this is effing awkward. I just spilled my guts out. Somebody else talk. Someone else talk. And Larry yes. goes. And Larry goes about what exactly? And Cliff goes. Stuff. Feelings. Let's get deep. Let's get to the root of our issues. Don't you want to know how your parents messed you up? I want to know how your parents messed you up. So I yes. thought that was funny. And then uh, Crazy Jane at the toward the end of the episode, uh, just when she walks out the door, she goes. Uh, oh, wow. You all need more th therapy than I do, and I'm the crazy one. <coughs> yeah, great, great stuff. 
Yeah, that was good. All right. So what's your rating for this one? I like this one a lot. I'm going to give it a nine out of ten episodes of Uneaten Toast. Right. That's very good. That's very good. Um, I like this one a lot, but it doesn't really advance the story forward. But it was a lot of great character development. So I give this one eight and a half Screaming Admiral Whiskers. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, so that was good. I like that. Good. Um, so I do have some Titan Tower news, but just really quickly. Um, we got some news. We got some uh, return dates. For yes, we a did. So we I got saw the, that. So we got the return uh, The re- for those wondering about the return of the second half of Young Justice Outsiders. That will return to DC Universe for the final half of the season. On July 2nd, 2019, and this is news that came out of WonderCon, and, and uh, for those of you wondering when Titan Season 2 is supposed to arrive, that's going to be in fall 2019. We don't have a specific date yet, but it seems like we're going to get a little sooner than we thought. Um, and if you notice, um, if you were noticing about the other shows like Swamp Thing and Stargirl, Stargirl, which was supposed to come out this summer um, – was pushed back all the way to early 2020 for some reason. And I'm thinking it was to make room for Titan season two to get that out faster as kind of like an opening on their schedule, I guess. So they kind of shuffled the schedule around, I think with that. I think that might be uh, the case. So that's great. Yep. So, so if you're looking forward to Titan season two, uh, that's when, and obviously we'll be talking about that here on Titan talk. No questions Mm -hmm. about that. Um, so we just have to wait until this roughly, what, September, October, maybe? Yeah. So uh, stay tuned, guys. It's only just like, what, six months away? So Absolutely, yeah. So we can do that. We can do that. And we obviously got to – we'll have Phil Parrish back on to hopefully talk Young Justice Outsiders, the second half of that. Absolutely. I See, that's another thing yep. that as we talk uh, tech talk. I need to watch those. I mm-hmm. saw a couple of them, and they look really good. So you should. You should. Catch up on that, and then you can join Phil and me for our yes, discussion absolutely. on New Justice Outsiders. That would be great. Yeah. All right. Um, so do you have a one tell it to Titan talk this time Yay. as we got some uh, feedback from Holly from Wisconsin. Of course. So always great to, always yes. great to hear from Holly. Uh, she goes, hey, Charles and Jesse, another great episode. And this is referring to Therapy Patrol. Uh, the whole team talking about past issues thanks to Cliff. All of them having visions about their pasts. The twist with Mr. Nobody egging Agent Whiskers, I think she means Admiral Whiskers, mm-hmm. on to avenge his mother's untimely death by going after Cliff may hopefully work in the team's favor. Yes. Interesting. Uh, I just wonder how long Cliff is going to be out of commission. I'll wrap it up here. Holly from Wisconsin. Thank you, Yay, Holly. Hey, very oh, nice. Always great to hear from you, Holly. We love it. Love the fact that you're watching Doom Patrol right along with us. And, Absolutely. Uh, hopefully that doesn't change. Yeah. So uh, if you want to be like Holly and you want to write in, we'd love to hear from you what you think about Doom Patrol. Uh, you can drop us a line at titantalkcast at gmail.com. That's titantalkcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you there. Just drop us a line, and we'll uh, read it here on the air. Or if you don't want us to, uh, just let us know, and we won't. But uh, if you just want to let us know what you're thinking. Uh, Otherwise, you can reach us on our Facebook account at Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. Uh, Please like that because that uh, helps uh, Facebook, their algorithms, make us more aware to people about what's going on. And uh, also, uh, please follow us on Twitter at Titan Talkcast. Yes, uh, and um, – Where we as, give you all kinds of news as it happens about Titans, Doom Patrol, any kind of DC Universe stuff. So uh, please check that out. And uh, if you get a chance, uh, as he's saying, going to iTunes or wherever you get your um, podcast from and sharing you know, a review or rating it right. truly does help people find us. Um, so that – and and also it makes us happy to read the reviews. Exactly. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, hopefully everybody out there is enjoying Titan Talk, enjoying our Doom Patrol uh, recaps. And um, yeah, you know what? Uh, and uh, if there's something we need, you want us to be doing, or you don't, we don't think we're doing it quite right. Uh, let us know. We'd, we're always up for hearing mm-hmm. feedback, and 
and trying to improve the show however we can. So uh, please let yeah. us know. All right. Yeah, uh, we've gotten uh, 12 ratings and six reviews. The last review was Very from cool. December 2018. So we need to get a 2019 review. Yeah, let's get there. that. Let's get that on the board. We're, it's like here we are. We're at the end of March. Yeah. So so yeah, if you could drop us a, a review if you haven't done so already, mm-hmm. and uh, let us know what you think about the show. Yeah. That'd be great. All right. So I can uh, be reached at Jesse Jackson DFW on Twitter. Yep. Uh, I am on Facebook, Jesse Jackson, Louisville, Texas. You can hear Charles and I talk about Doctor Who mm-hmm. um, on right now on a monthly basis. But don't worry, Charles is taking the slack up of the other three weeks a month, yep. usually with uh, some special guest, guest hosts. hosts that have yeah, been yeah, guess- amazing. Yep. Uh, so many great listeners have stepped up and said, yeah, I'd love to talk Doctor Who. So um, that's just that's just wonderful. And yep. uh, and you can hear me on Set Lusting Bruce, the Bruce Springsteen podcast. Uh, we are in the middle of doing a um, 40 Days of Springsteen where we take a Springsteen lyric and talk about what it means to us. And I – have been blessed, Charles, with so many listeners have awesome. sent in their own little uh, discussion. In fact, it's gone so well. I think after this 40 Days of Springsteen, I'm going to keep this going with um, a musical thought for the day and once a w- uh, musical thought um, and do that once a week going Very forward cool. to kind of an extra episode. Well, I'm glad you're getting so much good feedback on that. Yes, it is. It's uh, very, very nice. Um, and I coming up, send, I might have to send in one of my own. Yes, and in fact, um, I urge people. It doesn't have to be a Springsteen lyric. If it's you know Sting or the Cranberries or the Ramones, it yep. you know uh, Johnny Cash doesn't matter. Send it up and we can do it. <laughs> um, and then my last plug, uh, you should be seeing in the feed soon um, for tuning into Sci-Fi TV's feed. Small uh, Small Council Matters. Uh, the Game of Thrones roundtable where friend of the sh- uh, Doctor Who, Christine, uh, joins us. We just did our pregame show. Uh, that should be coming out soon, and we'll be covering Game of Thrones final season on a weekly basis. Yep, and we'll be talking uh, with Christine here once again on Next Stop Everywhere here shortly. Yes. Um, um, as, we, she's, as, we, she was, as we discuss, a good man goes to war. Oh, I'm, I, I just so wish it was doing that this weekend with Linda out of town. I just don't know if I can convince Linda that I'm, uh, next weekend when you're doing to let me yeah. visit. So well, I'm, I'm going to try my the, best. The, the offer's still there if you ever right, want. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Um, it's open invitation as always. Thanks. All right. So uh, as for me, you can reach me on the Twitter machine at Charles Skaggs, on Instagram at Charles Skaggs, or on Facebook, Charles Skaggs in Hilliard, Ohio. Or my blog at Geeky Things. Damn good coffee. And hot. Damn good coffee and hot. Where I talk about all the stuff we talk about here on Titan Talk, including Titans, Doom Patrol, any kind of casting news. Casting news for the other DC Universe shows. Or any kind of comic book sci-fi news. Uh, Probably going to be reviewing the new Shazam movie here as it comes out this coming weekend. So stay tuned for that. And uh, please check that out. I definitely appreciate it. News of my other podcasts, of course, including the aforementioned Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast with Jesse, and a bunch of uh, assorted special guest companions. And then also Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast that I do with Zan Sprouse, wife of comic artist Chris Sprouse, where I talk about all things Twin Peaks, David Lynch, etc., cetera, et cetera. And uh, please check that out as well. We definitely, I would definitely appreciate that. Um, other than that, next time on Titan Talk, we're going to talk Danny Patrol, the eighth episode of Doom Patrol Season 1, as we get the first episode, presumably, of Danny the Street. Yeah. And uh, the episode description for that is a sentient, genderqueer, teleporting street named Danny, who is being hunted by the secret Bureau of Normalcy, needs help from Niles, but gets Vic and Larry instead. So wackiness ensues, I'm sure. Absolutely. So come on back next week. We're going to talk Danny Patrol right here 
on Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And Jesse, thank you so much for being my wonderful co-host. Well, Charles, I am so glad. Um, this was, you know, I'm going to say this again, and I, I will probably end up saying it every episode. Um, this was such a wonderful surprise to me. I, I just had not thought that, you know, I, I, I just had a mild interest in doing this. And, and this has been such a surprise. Uh, I just did not expect this series to be this good. And I'm just so glad that I've got to, I get a chance to talk about it to you every week. Yeah, that's great. I, I mean, I honestly thought that I would have to round up another uh, co-host somewhere to help and, me review Doom Patrol, but I'm so glad you checked it out and I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. And uh, not to, I know we're going long, but yes. has this, has it met your expectations or exceeded it? I think it, I mean, given what, what we saw from Titans, I think it exceeded it. I didn't expect, yeah. I thought it would be kind of along the level of Titans after watching Titans. But Doom Patrol, I think, has just really elevated the game from Titans. And um, so I'm very satisfied with it. Is it exactly like the, the Grant Morrison Doom Patrol comics? No, but that's okay. I'm okay with it uh, because it kind of incorporates all the various Doom Patrol eras while bringing something new to the table as well. So I'm okay with that. The characters are consistent, and um, they're very faithful to their comics versions, uh, even if the storylines aren't like word for word verbatim. And uh, I'm really enjoying the hell out of Doom Patrol. Well, and I, I just – I promise I won't keep you too much longer. But yeah, that's right. What, what was interesting to me is um, – Okay. I just we can talked run a about long. Yeah, I, 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 you can tell Linda's not home, right? <laughs> yes, uh, I can. <laughs> so, tuning into Sci Fi TV just recently did a, they do Turner Minutes where they kind of ask questions. They talked about would you rather original material or material based on um, existing, you know, like an adaption. And, yep. you know, my answer was I love original material, but when you see someone take something you love and do a good job with it. There's something special about that. And right. and I get the feeling from you that since you love the Doom Patrol, you know, you're you're just really happy to see them do a great job of adapting it. It doesn't have to be yeah. a carbon copy. It's it's good right. they're making it its own. Yeah. I mean, would I have loved to have seen a straight like um you know like very extremely faithful version of Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol. You bet. Yeah. But um, I'm perfectly happy with this as well. Yeah. Um, it's been, you know, it it brings in so much, but but uses it as a kind of a foundation to expand and go in different directions, and like I said, just incorporates all the different eras, and you know, this is it, it's. As much as the as it would have been great to have a faithful version, um, it's just as great, if not more so, to have uh, this version as well. So we should, um, as an action item, um, do after Doom Patrol's over. Yes. Um, we should do a special Titan Talk ranking the DC Universe uh, TV adaptions, no matter the genre. Okay. That would be a fun thing for us to discuss. So I'll make a note of that. Uh, executive producer? I'm, 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 presum I'm presuming only because, uh, you know, like compared to like other networks, not just DC Universe. Right. In other words, Service. the original yes. Flash, you know, the, the original yes. Batman, you know, yes. the, the CW Arrow shows. Yeah, yes. The yeah, different, yeah. I think that would be a fun discussion. I think it would be. So oh. maybe we'll, we'll do that to help uh, – Help us to uh, get to Titan Season 2. Exactly. So All there right. we go. Sounds All like right. a plan. Hey, Charles, so this was we'll a blast that for another as day. always. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Tell uh, lovely Laura, I said, Lori, I said hi, and uh, well. uh, take us out. All right. So uh, all my best to Linda as well. And uh, everybody, come on back. Danny Patrol. Do you think you've seen everything from Doom Patrol? Uh, wait till you meet Danny of the Street. You ain't seen <laughs> nothing yet. <laughs> so everybody come on back it's going to be a lot of fun and we'll see you next time right here titan talk the titans podcast goodbye everybody <laughs>